करते हैं नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन गुड इवनिंग और आज जो है प्रीतम जी ने बताया कि मैं क्लास में पांच मिनट पहले ही आ गया था आई वाज अमंग द फर्स्ट फ्यू टू बी इन द क्लास दिव्या दिव्या और प्रीतम जी के साथ मैं भी मौजूद था yes. से बिकॉज आज का जो टॉपिक है आज किस टॉपिक पे हम बात करने जा रहे हैं नर्वस सिस्टम सर हाँ तो मुझे लगा कि ये नर्वस सिस्टम जो है कहीं सबको नर्वस ना बना दे इसलिए इसलिए मैं थोड़ा जल्दी में पहले से आ गया बिकॉज आई वाज वेरी एक्साइटेड अबाउट द सिस्टम तो वैसे तो मैं ये बताना चाहूंगा कि आदमी के शरीर के सभी सिस्टम और ऑर्गन्स बहुत ही इम्पोर्टेंट है क्योंकि यदि कोई भी चीज इनमें से मिसिंग हो जाए या खराब हो जाए तो बहुत सारी प्रॉब्लम्स खड़ी हो सकती हैं लेकिन दो सिस्टम जो ह्यूमन बॉडी में बहुत ज्यादा इम्पोर्टेंस रखते हैं और जिनके बारे में बहुत कम एक्चुअल नॉलेज अवेलेबल है वो है नर्वस सिस्टम और दूसरा सिस्टम क्या होगा सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम नहीं सम मोर गेसेस सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम इज नॉट द वन इम्यूनिटी इम्यूनिटी यस वैसे तो इम्यूनिटी जो है बहुत समय से immunity has been the least talked about subject iske bare mein bahut kam baat hoti hai lekin ye thanks to corona ki usne puri duniya ko immunity samjha di hai na aur puri human race jo hai immunity ke bare mein baat karne lagi abhi samjha to nahi hai logon ne lekin baat to zarur kar rahe hain sab log and आज का जो हमारा टॉपिक है नर्वस सिस्टम यदि हम इसकी बात करें तो दिस सिस्टम इज लाइक एन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर सर वॉल्यूम इज अ बिट लो आई गेस बिकॉज़ मैं अपने एंड पे चेक कर रही तो 100% है मैं आज देखता हूं कि ये अटैच हो सके तो आप आवाज आपकी ठीक आ रही है सर इयरफोन लगाने की जरूरत है जिनको भी वॉल्यूम वॉल्यूम क्लियर क्लियर है 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 आपकी सर सर नो डाउट चेक किया इसमें इयरफोन का भी वो नहीं है की मैं माइक्रोफोन अटैच कर सकू ब्लूटूथ वाले से अटैच हो जाएगा सर ब्लूटूथ वाले से हाँ लेकिन ब्लूटूथ अभी है नहीं मेरे पास हाँ तो आपका ठीक है सर आपका आपका साउंड ठीक है आपके तरफ ओके तो नर्वस सिस्टम जो बॉडी का है दिस इज द मेन एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर ऑफ द बॉडी पूरे बॉडी का मैनेजमेंट यही सिस्टम करता है हर चीज का काम करना सही ढंग से काम ना करना वो सब कुछ डिपेंड्स अपॉन द नर्वस सिस्टम जितने भी हमारे डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम है या स्केलेटन सिस्टम है सब का कहीं ना कहीं से मस्कुलर सिस्टम हमने पढ़ा और मस्कुलर सिस्टम के जब हम एलिमेंट्स पढ़ रहे थे तो आई एम सॉरी इवेंट बैक इन इंग्लिश सो व्हेन वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट मस्कुलर सिस्टम most of the ailments were related with neuro linked to neuro yes sir so neuro is the most important system mm. along with immunity mm. neuro takes care of the administration of the body and immu- immunity takes care or immunity protects our body from external aggression and internal disorders 
so today we are going to talk about the nervous system can anybody tell me what what do you understand by nervous system any guesses sir puri body ko control karne ka jo power hai isi ke paas hai message ji message bhejna sab jo hai na sabko control power yahi command dete hain nerves ke dwara cells ke dwara nerve cells theek hai but what what is nervous system सर न्यूरोन सर इसके बारे में बता कि नर्व सेल्स होते हैं उसके पार्ट्स होते हैं न्यूरोन के एक्सोन डेंड्राइट्स वगैरह इतना ही जानकारी सर बस इससे ज्यादा जी जी ओके सो नर्वस नर्वस सिस्टम कंप्राइजेस ऑफ थ्री थिंग्स इन ह्यूमन बॉडी जी देयर आर थ्री मेजर पार्ट्स ऑफ द नर्वस सिस्टम यस सर can you tell me what is the first part of nervous system can anybody the brain sir, spinal cord sir yes brain, brain. Spinal, uh, spinal, spinal cord spinal cord Heart. excellent and pns what eh? pns sir peripheral nervous system no <laughs> brain and spinal cord sir brain is spinal cord and what else one more thing other than brain and spinal cord brain and spinal yeah, cord heart cardio no no pituitary cardio. gland pituitary gland sir no yeah. brain spinal cord brain spinal cord and nerves neurons nerves ah neurons agar nerves 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 because Entire yes. basis communication is through nerves. Nerves, yes, sir. Or Hindi me blood vessel ko bhi nerves kehte hain, or nerves ko bhi nerves kehte. So most of the time people get confused. Mm -hmm. Nerves me compression ho gaya, or <laughs> to wo sab jenge blood vessel me compression ho gaya. so there is a confusion so these are three things one is brain second is spinal cord and third third is nerves there are three parts of the system now <clears throat> nervous system comprises of two main systems in the body there are two parts of the nervous system one is सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम दैट इज कॉल्ड सी एन एस एंड द सेकेंड इज पेरिफेरल नर्वस सिस्टम दैट इज कॉल्ड पी एन एस नाउ सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम कंप्राइजेज ऑफ ब्रेन एंड स्पाइनल कॉर्ड स्पाइनल कॉर्ड आप डू यू नो वेर इज स्पाइनल कॉर्ड बैक ऑफ द ब्रेन सर इट इज फोर्टी सेंटीमीटर इन लेंथ इट इज कनेक्टेड टू ब्रेन या यूट्यूब वीडियो फ्रॉम देर आई गोट यस सो वॉट एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम द ब्रेन नाउ दिस स्पाइनल कॉर्ड इज लाइक योर fiber optic cable and <clears throat> so this brain is protected by the skull and spinal cord is protected by the discs in the spine and it runs from the brain till your last bone of the spine so the main system is central nervous system that that comprises of brain and spinal cord so today we will see a video 
on central nervous system first, which will give you clarity on the parts of the brain and how central nervous system works. Pritam ji, can you, can you just show us the first video? Nervous system is ke upar hai, haan, ye. The great and mighty nervous system, or the brain as most of us call it. What makes this organ unique is that within it lies the ability for humans to know oneself. This feature distinguishes and sets the human species apart from the rest of creation. This ability is known as consciousness or intelligence. To begin, let's look at the primary function of the nervous system. The basic purpose is to coordinate all of the activities of the body. It enables the body to respond and adapt to changes that occur both inside and outside the body. Now the nervous system is actually split into two parts. The central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. We'll explore the peripheral later, but first let's look at the central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of two major structures, the brain and the spinal cord. As most people know, the brain is found within the cranium or skull, and there are six main sections among other structures within it. These six sections are the cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, the midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata. The first section is the cerebrum. This is the largest section. It's divided into two major hemispheres, which are the right and left hemisphere. And the cerebrum is further divided into four lobes. These four lobes are the frontal, the parietal, the temporal, and the occipital. The frontal lobe is primarily responsible for reasoning and thought. The parietal is primarily responsible for integrating sensory information. The temporal is primarily responsible for processing auditory information from the ears. And the occipital is primarily responsible for processing visual information from the eyes. The second section of the brain is the cerebellum. This is the section located in the back of the head below the cerebrum and above the first cervical of the neck. It is responsible for muscle coordination, balance, posture, and muscle tone. The diencephalon section is found between the cerebrum and the midbrain. It contains two structures, the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The thalamus behaves much like a relay station and directs sensory impulses to the cerebrum. And the hypothalamus controls and regulates autonomic nervous system functions such as temperature, appetite, water balance, sleep, and blood vessel constriction and dilation. The hypothalamus also plays a role in the emotions such as anger, fear, pleasure, pain, and defection. The midbrain section is located below the cerebrum at the top of the brainstem. It is responsible for certain eye and auditory reflexes. The pons is located below the midbrain and in the brainstem. It is responsible for certain reflex actions such as chewing, tasting, and saliva production. And the last section is the medulla oblongata. It's the lowest part of the brainstem and it connects with the spinal cord and is responsible for regulating heart and blood vessel function, digestion, respiration, swallowing, coughing, sneezing, and blood pressure. It's also known as the center for respiration. Now that we've covered the brain, let's take a look at the other half of the central nervous system, the spinal cord. 
The spinal cord is the link between the brain and the nerves and the rest of the body. The spinal cord is divided into four different regions. The cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and the afferent and efferent spinal nerves, which merge to form the peripheral nerves. The afferent spinal nerves are responsible for carrying information from the body to the brain. And the efferent spinal nerves are responsible for carrying information from the brain to the body. Now within this elaborate system of nerves, neurons, and dendrites, there is a system that regulates the functions of the central nervous system which lie outside its major components such as the brain and the spinal cord. This system is known as the peripheral nervous system and is subdivided into two smaller systems, the somatic system and the autonomic nervous system. The somatic nervous system is responsible for carrying motor and sensory information both to and from the central nervous system. This system is made up of nerves that connect to the skin, sensory organs, and all skeletal muscles. The somatic system is also responsible for nearly all voluntary muscle movements as well as for processing sensory information that arrives via external stimuli including hearing, touch, and sight. The structures that allow this communication to happen between the nerves throughout the body and the central nervous system are known as the afferent sensory neurons and the efferent motor neurons. Now afferent simply means conducting inward and efferent means conducting outward. So just like in the spinal nerves, the afferent neurons take information from the nerves to the central nervous system and the efferent neurons take information from the central nervous system to the muscle fibers throughout the body. The autonomic nervous system is further divided into the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is vital to our survival. Have you ever heard of the fight or flight response to danger? The sympathetic nervous system revs up the body when confronted with imminent danger to either defend yourself or to escape the threat. The parasympathetic nervous system is the counterbalance to the sympathetic response to danger, whether real or imagined. Once the threat is gone, the parasympathetic brings all the systems of the body back to normal. Now at this point you should have a basic understanding of the nervous system, but let's do a quick recap. The basic purpose of the nervous system is to coordinate all the activities of the body. It enables the body to respond and adapt to changes that occur both inside and outside the body. The two major parts to the nervous system are the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. The central nervous system is also divided into two major structures, the brain and the spinal cord. The brain is found within the skull or cranium and it is made up of six main sections. These six sections are the cerebrum, cerebellum, diencephalon, the midbrain, pons, and the medulla oblongata. The other half of the central nervous system is the spinal cord. And the spinal cord is the link between the brain and the nerves and the rest of your body. The spinal cord is divided into four different regions. The cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and afferent and efferent spinal nerves, which merge to form the peripheral nerves. Now that we know the brain and spinal cord primarily make up the central nervous system, let's look at the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is essentially the nervous system outside of the brain and spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is then subdivided into two smaller systems called the somatic nervous system and the autonomic nervous system. So, as you can see, the nervous system is quite complex, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Thanks for watching. Look for more videos on the nervous system at cteskills.com.
so <clears throat> i think the video was quite clear it has shown you different parts of the brain elaborated yes, yes. that there are two systems which constitute nervous system one is cns central nervous system which has got <clears throat> brain and spinal cord yes. and then peripheral nervous system rest of the things all the nerves which are spread in the body whether the communication is going from the nerves to the brain from the sensory organs skin or this thing to the brain or the message is coming from the brain to various organs and parts of the body so that is called peripheral nervous system now brain we have talked in the video you have seen there are six main parts of the brain and all these parts have got different function the biggest part of the brain is cerebrum c e r e b r u m this is the largest part of the brain and which covers from the front till the back and it is divided into two lobes either side left and right and then there are four parts of this first is the frontal part which is in the front the name suggests front second is the parietal region that is behind the front frontal part then is temporal region that is on either side we call it temples temporal region and then <clears throat> is the occipital region that is at the back so there are four main parts of the cerebrum <clears throat> then beyond cerebrum is the cerebellum a small part which is located at the back of the brain below occipital region and all voluntary movements and balance of the body is done by the cerebellum all actions which are related to memory language reasoning and sensory perceptions is controlled by the cerebrum then there is middle brain diencephalon diencephalon then is uh what is it called oblong medulla oblongata it is it is like a wo jo ken hoti hai chhadi hoti hai if you have seen umbrella umbrella that main this thing it is of this shape and this either side of this there are both frontal lobes they are attached to this and the communication passes on to the spinal cord so <clears throat> along with this you have heard about thalamus and hypothalamus hypothalamus is considered to be the junction box between the body and the brain everything passes from hypothalamus to the medulla oblongata and it controls hunger thirst body temperature release of hormones everything is controlled by hypothalamus
and thalamus basically sends the information to the brain the entire message coming from the body whether is transmitted that is the central uh, place from where the message to different parts of the brain is transmitted from thalamus which is whatever message comes from different parts of the body is transferred to the brain from through thalamus so these, these are the basic parts i hope today you must have come to know some something about brain and the spinal system so we will now i have another video which will clarify certain things i'll request pritam ji to show the video yes sir uh this one sir cranial no no no, no 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 not this one okay. move up first one ah, second yeah first first one first one okay. happy spiritual morning welcome to the five days boot camp hello welcome to mumu math and science in this video i'd like to talk about the parts of the brain and this is very appropriate for middle school and late elementary students. The top of the brain is called the cerebrum. It is separated into four lobes. The temporal, the parental, occipital, and the frontal. The cerebellum, also called the little brain, controls coordination, balance, and helps us talk and walk. The temporal lobe helps us process sounds. In other words, it helps us hear. It also helps with some balance. The parental lobe is also called the association lobe because it communicates with the other lobes. The parental lobe is where information such as taste, temperature, and touch are integrated or processed. The occipital lobe is responsible for your vision. The frontal lobe is responsible for your executive function. This includes your memory, impulse, control, your emotions, planning, and organization. The brain is connected to the spinal cord at the brain stem. The brain stem controls the flow of messages between the brain and the rest of the body. It also controls very basic functions such as your breathing, heart rate, and your blood pressure. Thanks for watching Moo Moo Math and Science. Uploads of math, science, Has this video given some clarification about the brain? No. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So we will play another video. Then we will talk about the. There are two videos which I have selected for the class, which will give you further clarification and understanding of the central nervous system. And then we will talk about central nervous system. And today I am going to talk about. Uh, one of the case which came to me recently how we what diagnosis was made and what was the case so we will discuss a case study today <clears throat> so Pritam ji just start next video The second one, huh?
has your brain ever wondered what the parts of the brain are and what are their functions? Well, that's basically what we're going to talk about in this video. So what you're looking at is a section of your brain. And to make sense of this, let's say you could see someone's brain from the top. And you would be able to see the two hemispheres like this. Don't worry, this is not a brain. This is just a walnut. It looks very similar to the brain. But let's say these are two hemispheres. Now, imagine you cut this walnut. And then you look at the inside side of this one. And you will see something like this, right? The inner side of one of the halves. Well, that's basically what we're looking at. It's the inner side of one of the hemispheres. Okay? So let's get rid of that. We can broadly divide our brain into... Has the, has the class understood what is the shape in front of you? Yes, sir. Walnut. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. sir. <laughs> this is not walnut. This is walnut. Clear walnut. This is, clear walnut. <laughs> this is uh, the brain has been chopped into two parts. Yes, sir. From the center line. And this is one of the sections which is appearing in front of you. This is just to explain. It is a cross section. Just to explain you various uh, parts of the brain so that sometimes when you are, you get a case that people are talking about uh, cerebellum, cerebrum, and then talking about thalamus, hypothalamus, midbrain, medulla oblongata, then what does this mean? And from where these functions are getting controlled. So if you know, you will be able to comprehend faster. You will be able to analyze things much faster. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> this is cross section of the brain chopped from the midline into two parts. So this is one of the part in front of you. Okay. Sitanji, start. To three parts. The forebrain, which is this big yellow section. The midbrain, which is this tiny pink section. Vo volume and is very low. The hindbrain, or the lower brain, which is this blue section. Usually when we say humans have big brain, you're basically talking about this forebrain brain section. Brain. Okay? And then the midbrain is actually the beginning part of the brain stem. Brain stem is, is brain stem is on top of which the forebrain sits. The brain stem connects the forebrain to the spinal cord. This continues as the spinal cord. So the beginning section of that brain stem is what we call as the midbrain. The, the later section of the brain stem is a part of the hindbrain. Right? This is the hindbrain. And the hindbrain also consists of this section. You know, this itself looks like a mini brain all by itself. But that and the remaining portion of that brainstem is basically what we call the hindbrain. Okay, so what are the functions of them? Before we get into the details, to get a broad sense of what these parts do, we can think that the forebrain is responsible for all the voluntary functions, and the midbrain and the hindbrain together are responsible for all the involuntary functions. So when I say voluntary, think about all the actions that you carry out consciously by thinking about them like to take a walk or maybe to talk to someone or decide to watch this video about brains so all of that is from your forebrain and of course we'll talk more details about that in a second and when i say involuntary functions there are some functions that are happening in your body which are not in control what which you're not in control of for example your heart beating or maybe your digestion you're not in control of those, right? So those are mostly taken care of by your midbrain and the hindbrain. So how do we remember which part does which? Well, the way I like to think about it is I remember that you know, what makes humans special is their big brain, big forebrain. And I remember that we have this amazing intellectual ability, right? Our intelligence. So forebrain gives us our intelligence. So it's because of that I can do all my thinking and all my decisions and also I can walk and talk because of this. So that's how I basically remember forebrain controls voluntary actions. With this in mind, let's look at the functions and the parts in a little bit more detail. 
So let's zoom out a little bit. And I've made some space so that we can write more parts. So let's start with the forebrain. If you look at the forebrain, you can again kind of see two sections of it. The outer section, which contains a lot of folds, and the inner section. Let me shade that inner section a little bit darker so we can identify that. So the outer section, right, this big giant outer section, it's called, it's called, let me call that, it's called the cerebrum, cerebrum, sorry. The cerebrum, this whole outer section, which I have colored with light yellow, is the cerebrum. And we're not gonna look at further parts of that, okay? So that's the outer section for us. If you look at the inner section, we're gonna look at three parts of the inner section. Yeah. <coughs> One part. So he is not talking about the four parts of the cerebrum. But I think the class remembers what are the four parts of cerebrum. Because we have talked three, four times about this parts of the cerebrum. Front part, parietal behind, occipital and temporal. Hypothalamus. Correct. Uh, I think all, Temporal, all huh? parts have got covered. Mm. Okay. Frontal lobe. Frontal lobe, yes. Then behind frontal lobe, in the middle is parietal lobe. And further to parietal lobe, at the back is occipital region. And then on either side, is temporal region. Temporal. Okay. So these are the four parts of the cerebrum. Mm -hmm. And basically this is the active brain in the body. Okay. Pritam ji, start next. Put an arrow mark like this. Then one part which is a little below that. I'm going to write over here somewhere. Okay, wait a second. Yeah, let me write that over here. And this small thing that you can see, that one. These are the three parts that we need to remember, at least for our syllabus, okay? So this one, you know what we call that? That is called the thalamus. Let me use this color, okay? It's called the thalamus. And these are all Greek names, okay? So it will not make sense to us. But I looked up, thalamus kind of means an inner portion or inner region. And that's basically what this is, right? It's the inner region of our forebrain. So the, com the, the, the part that comes below that is called hypothalamus. So the next part is hypothalamus. And hypo kind of means lower. So it's the lower part of the thalamus, hypothalamus. And this last part, which we'll be interested in, this one, this small thing that you can see over here, that is called the pituitary gland. Pituitary gland. Right, this part. Okay. So these are the career. four parts of our forebrain. So these are the only parts. Class, uh, I think all of you know about pituitary gland. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What is pituitary gland? Um, it pituitary is the master gland. endocrine gland. Mm. Yeah, master endocrine gland. Yeah, correct. Thank you. So, uh, this is very important gland, and there are a lot of activities, a lot of things which take place into the body because of this. And this gland, uh, and there are many, uh, this thing cases which come for some disturbance in the pituitary and what it causes many actions, it sometimes it leads into uh, further growth of your facial muscles, facial uh, structure or growth of your hands and uh, thickening of your nails. There are a lot of things which happen with this. So we will discuss when we discuss the cases of related to pituitary. 
but just remember this is the master gland of the body and it has plays a very important role and as brought out uh, I was telling you hypothalamus is basically the junction box between the brain and the body because you, you can see the position of hypothalamus. It is just on top of the midbrain that is which is connected to medulla oblongata. So from here, everything, the decision which is, whatsoever is taken by the cerebrum gets passed on to for functioning in the body. Ritamji, please start. That we'll concentrate on. So let me just put them together. So this is your four brain parts. All right. So what do they do? What are their functions? We we don't have to look at the individual functions. We don't have to do that. But the four brain as a whole, what does it do? Well, one of the things, like we already said, voluntary functions. But again, let's dig a little deeper. What does it do? Well, one of the things that you can think of is thinking. Right? And when I say thinking, I'm including a lot of things over here because there's not much space. Thinking, your learning ability, your speech, language, all of that. All of that comes from your forebrain. But what else? To think about what else your forebrain can do, take a look at this picture. The reason you are able to see this is because of your forebrain. You may be wondering, wait, it's my eyes, right? It's eyes. But the eyes send the signal to the brain and it's your forebrain that does the processing and that's why you can see it. Similarly, you can hear me right now because of your forebrain. All the five senses, you can sense them because of your forebrain. And so, one important function of your forebrain is sensing. Let me just write that as sensing. Okay, what else? Well, you identified this picture, right? It's a puppy. Did you confuse it with something like maybe a donkey or tiger? No. The reason you can even remember it's a puppy is because of your memory. Because you know what puppies look like and you can associate with it. So that also comes from your forebrain. Memory, learning, all of that comes from your forebrain. Now when you looked at this puppy, some kind of emotion came in, right? Like you may have felt, oh, what a cute puppy. You may have felt happy looking at it. Maybe if I showed you some different picture, maybe if I showed you some scary picture, you would experience fear, right? So all the emotions, they too come from your forebrain. All your emotions, including love. That's right, love does not come from the heart, it comes from your forebrain. In fact, fun story, the other day my wife asked me, hey, how much do you love me? I said, I love you with all my forebrain. Yeah, she hasn't spoken to me since, but it was worth it. All right, now besides these, there are also other things that the forebrain does. Some of the feelings that you get, like for example, the feeling of hunger, the feeling of being sleepy, thirst, or maybe, you know, after you have finished a meal, the feeling of fullness, all of that also comes from your forebrain. Actually, that comes from this part of the forebrain, but we don't have to remember all those things. So these are some of the functions of your forebrain. So what's next? We're not gonna look at the parts of the midbrain, it's a tiny section, we'll not look at its parts. So let's jump directly to the hindbrain. If you look at this brain stem over here, the bluer section, you can actually see two distinct regions over there. So one region, one lump over here, and one more here, right? So this one, this one, let me use a different color. Right, so this one over here, it's called pons. That's the name given to it, pons. Again, I know, little weird name. Uh, it's Latin, again, it means bridge. It's kind of like bridging between the middle brain and this bottom part. That brings us to this bottom part, which is pretty important for us. The bottom one is called, let me write that down over here. It's called medulla, medulla oblongata. Okay, we're gonna look at its functions separately. And then you can look at this big region. Let's make it dark so we can see that. So this region, which kind of looks like a brain on its own, is called cerebellum. Do not confuse that with cerebrum. Cerebrum is the biggest part of our brain. 
cerebellum, that's the name given to this. So these three regions, these three regions are going to be the part of our hindbrain. So these are hindbrain. And since we're not going to look at the parts of the midbrain, this is it. This is all the parts that we need to remember. So again, no, no, what are the functions no, no, no. of the hindbrain? We already saw it's involuntary, but let's look at the individual one. Let's look at medulla oblongata and the cerebellum. These two are important for us. So what does the medulla oblongata do? Well, again, it controls most of the life-giving involuntary processes. Okay, so um, we'll say life-giving involuntary processes. In I'll just write involve, okay? involuntary processes. That means these are the most essential for life, like your heart beating, your breathing, digestion, all of those essential things are taken care of by your medulla oblongata. Along with that, it also controls some of your reflexes. Now if you've studied about reflexes before, you may be wondering, hey, isn't that controlled by your, by your spinal cord? Yes, some of them are controlled by the spinal cord, but some of the reflexes, like your sneezing, coughing, those are controlled by your medulla oblongata, all right? The idea is the reflexes are not controlled by your thinking part of the brain. None of the reflexes are controlled by the forebrain. That's why they're even called reflexes. But the medulla does control some of your reflexes as well. So these are the two major functions of the medulla. Okay, what about the cerebellum? It's getting a little crowded. I hope you can see them apart. So again, I'm gonna put some division over here. Anyways, so what does cerebellum do? Well, cerebellum also has some involuntary function, but it's a little different. One of its function is to maintain balance. Balance. Now what I mean by this is, if you want to do even the simplest of the simplest tasks, like walking, or maybe holding a cup, these things requires careful calculation, coordination, you, know, you have to think about where the gravity is and all of those stuff. Right? If you try to build a robot, it's then you actually see how complicated those things are. But we do it with ease. That's because of our cerebellum, because it is the one that maintains balance. And along with that, another major function is motor memory. Motor memory, what's that? Well, think of uh, riding a bicycle. With the first time when you were trying to learn the bicycle, you were using a lot of your forebrain, you were learning. You're learning to get balance, you are learning how the pedal works, you are learning maybe how to do the tring tring and everything, you, all those things you're learning. But once you learn that, once you've done enough practice, now when you want to ride your bicycle, you don't even think about it. We say it's, it has become our second nature, right? All of things happen automatically. How? It's the cerebellum. It's this, that's what we call as motor memory. Another example could be, let's say when you're typing on a keyboard, if you have enough enough practice, you don't have to look down anymore. You don't have to worry about which keys are where. It just automatically happens. Motor memory. So all those things are controlled by the cerebellum. You know how I can remember this? I remember this um, by remembering that, you know, when people drink alcohol, it's their cerebellum that gets affected. Think about it. If your cerebellum gets affected, your balance gets affected. And that's why people who are intoxicated, they can't balance themselves. They will be walking funny and everything they may no longer be in a position to ride a bicycle. This is actually one of the reasons why we say don't drink and drive, because your motor memory gets affected. So even the most basic things that initially, uh, usually we think it's easy for us to do, like while driving, that gets affected. All right, so that's how I remember uh, the functions of the cerebellum. All right, so finally you may be wondering, what about the midbrain? So this is our midbrain, right? We're not gonna look at the parts of the midbrain. Midbrain also controls some of the involuntary functions. For example, when you shine light in your eyes, your pupils become smaller. That is controlled by your midbrain. So the midbrain also controls some of your involuntary functions, but we're not gonna look at that. And this is pretty much it for us. Now since this screen itself contains the entire summary, why don't you try pausing the video and then revise and then see if you can recall all the parts and the functions without looking. It's a new clothes there, you know. So <clears throat> you have seen uh, there is a lot of clarity yes, as sir. regards the brain is concerned. Yes, sir. And uh, its functions are concerned, locations of various 
parts of the brain is concerned everything is very clear and if it is not clear kindly go through these videos they will be part of your uh, this thing so you can clarify and learn much more as required yes and sir. the knowledge knowledge of this is not restricted till the class you have freedom to learn as much as you can mm. okay because i have a laid down syllabus i have got fixed timing to perform so i'll be covering only that much as is required but for anybody enhancing knowledge is not should not be limited to the class yes sir you can go ahead and learn as much as you want so uh, we have uh, tried to give as much clarification and clarity required as far as do you feel that today you are more uh, aware about the central nervous system about yes, the sir. brain its parts its functions about the active brain and the passive brain i consider there are two brains in the human body one is active brain that is cerebrum and then there is a passive brain that includes cerebellum medulla oblongata and the mid brain do you know what is the meaning of active and passive brain when i talk in gyropathy active brain takes input from all your sensory organs environmental changes your education your experience whatsoever you have and then active brain takes a decision it is like headmaster of the school who gets the input from everyone and then gives the decision what to be done in annual function this year and then this decision is passed on to the teachers ki who who will organize what and then the teachers put in all out effort they prepare the program and then annual function takes place yes sir so your active brain yes. is basically decision maker and your passive brain is the executing authority it executes everything within the body so who is more powerful active brain or passive brain active brain sir both actually both also sir they both have their role yes but it's the, the thing is even if headmaster have passed an order that annual function will be conducted on so and so day mm. and the passive brain doesn't prepare the list and doesn't invite the chief guest yes sir see the thing is your body your body has to function mm. and most of the things if we hand over the role of passive brain to the active brain do you think active brain will be able to do the needful no sir then you will be deciding how many pumps you require in your heart which valve to open and which valve to shut hai na how many breaths you should take in a minute hmm. how much how many liters of blood you will send it to the kidney for filtering hmm. all these decisions will have to be taken by you 
because your active brain will get involved in doing the passive activity. So, what I feel that passive brain is much power, much more powerful than active brain, because entire body organ functions are controlled by the passive brain. This is what is my understanding. मतलब this is not written anywhere. This is what I have been feeling. कि I think not even a single function of an organ can be controlled by us. Uh, it is getting controlled in uh, now. Nowadays, you get an option whether you want to do an automatic setting or a manual setting. Yeah. So. so most of the people they prefer doing auto setting mm. because in manual setting you are likely to make mistakes yeah so handing over your body organs to active brain i don't think anybody will take risk or is there anybody who is ready to take this risk <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so i know both are very important but passive brain is much more powerful as far as i i i know because the entire body management is done by the passive brain so there is one more thing which we are missing out uh, today we have not covered that is there are two types of nerves in the nervous system so one is cranial nerves these nerves they come out from the brain and they control certain things in the body and then there are spinal nerves which in any case are spread all over the body they go from various places so today we will just touch up on the cranial nerves because this is very important and i have a video on this then we can discuss after seeing the video prithan ji can you show the video sir i know it's already 8 i think the class is feeling this thing but let's finish this video so that we are able to discuss this in the next class yes sir hey Have you heard about this thing called the nervous system of your body? If the you're wondering, system. no, it's not a system designed to make you feel nervous. Wait a minute. Yes. But ah, then, वो दूसरा वीडियो है. Okay. ये cranial nerves वाला. what is it well not this yeah cranium there are three ways in which ai is going to change your job forever ai tools can now write emails for you ai tools The 12 pairs of cranial nerves emerge directly from the base of the brain and relay information between the brain and the head and neck regions, except for the cranial nerve 10 which also communicates with internal organs. Cranial nerves are numbered according to the order they exit the brain from front to back. Each nerve of a pair innervates one side of the head or body. Cranial nerves can be solely sensory or mixed. Some mixed nerves are predominantly motor. Cranial nerve 1, also known as olfactory nerve, is a sensory nerve responsible for the sense of smell. It originates in olfactory mucosa of the nasal cavity and terminates in olfactory bulb at the base of frontal lobe. Olfactory nerve function is assessed as the ability to smell and is done for each nostril separately. The second cranial nerve is optic nerve responsible for vision. It originates in the retina of the eye and ends in the thalamus. Optic nerve damage leads to partial or total blindness. 
Vision acuity is tested to assess nerve damage one eye at a time. Cranial nerve 3, or oculomotor nerve, is predominantly motor. It controls most of the eye movements as well as opening of eyelid and constriction of pupil. It originates in the midbrain and contains both somatic and parasympathetic fibers. Somatic fibers innervate several extraocular, extrinsic eye muscles, while parasympathetic fibers terminate inside the eyeball and supply intrinsic eye muscles responsible for movement of the lens and pupil. Cranial nerves 3 are classified as predominantly motor because they also contain a small number of sensory fibers that provide the brain with feedback information about eye movements and location, known as proprioception. Oculomotor nerve palsy results in drooping eyelid, dilated pupil, loss of accommodation reflex, double vision, and inability to move eye in certain directions. A characteristic sign is the down and out deviation, where the affected eye drifts downward and outward. Additional assessment tests include pupillary response to light and ability to track moving objects. The fourth cranial nerve, also called trachlear nerve, is the smallest cranial nerve and the only one that exits from the dorsal side of the brainstem. It originates in the midbrain and terminates in the superior oblique muscle of the eye. Damage to this nerve leads to double vision and eye deviation upward. The affected eye is unable to move down when looking to the direction of the normal eye. Patients often adopt a characteristic head tilt forward, chin tuck in, and toward the normal eye side. Cranial nerve 5, or trigeminal nerve, connects the pons of the brainstem and the face. It has three divisions. The ophthalmic division conveys sensory information from the upper face, including the surface of eyeball, superior nasal mucosa, and frontal and ethmoid sinuses. Loss of sensation is tested by touching the eyeball with a cotton wisp. To note, however, that a no-blinking response may also result from facial muscle weakness due to seventh cranial nerve damage, in which case the patient can feel the cotton wisp but fails to blink. The maxillary division relays sensory information from the middle section of the face, including the inferior nasal mucosa, maxillary sinus, palate, and upper teeth and gums. The mandibular division is a mixed nerve. Its sensory component transmits sensation from the lower face, including the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, but excluding taste buds and lower teeth and gums. The motor component controls the muscles of mastication, or chewing. Impaired motor function can be detected as a deviation of the jaw to the side of weakened muscles when the patient clenches the teeth. Cranial nerve 6, or abducens nerve, is a predominantly motor nerve responsible for lateral eye movement. It originates in the lower pons and terminates in the lateral rectus muscle of the eye. Damage to this nerve results in inability to move eye laterally. The affected eye turns inward at rest. The defect is more noticeable when the patient looks toward the affected side or fixates at faraway objects. Cranial nerve 7, also known as facial nerve, is a mixed nerve with many branches and diverse functions. It controls the muscles of facial expression, including those involved in eye blinking and closing. It conveys taste sensations from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue, and it carries parasympathetic nerve impulses to tear glands and salivary glands. The motor division has five branches. Each provides input to a group of facial muscles. There are also motor fibers to the stapedius muscle of the middle ear. Damage to facial nerve results in facial muscle weakness, which typically manifests as asymmetry of facial movements, especially when the patient smiles or grimaces. Other symptoms include drooping of mouth, drooling, inability to close one eye, facial pain or abnormal sensation, distorted sense of taste, mostly for sweet and salty foods, and intolerance to loud noise. Cranial nerve 8, or vestibulocochlear nerve, consists of two nerves, vestibular nerve responsible for equilibrium and cochlear nerve responsible for hearing. The vestibular nerve originates in the vestibule of the inner ear and terminates in the pons, while cochlear nerve originates in the cochlea of the inner ear and ends in the medulla. Damage to cranial nerve 8 results in impaired hearing, vertigo, tinnitus, and involuntary rhythmic eye movements known as nystagmus. 
Hey everyone, I'm Tulika. You know, I used to speak in broken English at the office. Maybe because I did. Cranial nerve 9, also known as glossopharyngeal nerve, is a mixed nerve that provides sensory, motor, and parasympathetic functions. It conveys sensory information from the upper pharynx, middle and outer ear, and the posterior third of the tongue, including taste buds. It carries visceral sensory signals from baroreceptors in the carotid sinus and chemoreceptors in the carotid body, providing inputs for regulation of blood pressure and monitoring of blood oxygen, respectively. It provides parasympathetic innervation to the parotid salivary gland and controls the stylopharyngeus muscle responsible for elevation of the larynx, pharynx, as well as dilation of pharynx during speech and swallowing. Damage to glossopharyngeal nerve results in difficulty swallowing, speaking, and distorted sense of taste, especially for bitter and sour tastings. Cranial nerve 10, or vagus nerve, is the longest cranial nerve with diverse functions, many of which are critical. It is the major parasympathetic nerve regulating pulmonary, cardiovascular, and digestive activities. It controls most muscles of the pharynx, larynx, and some muscles of the soft palate and tongue, and thus plays an important role in swallowing and speech. It conveys sensory information from the pharynx, larynx, and thoracic and abdominal areas, including baroreceptors and chemoreceptors in the aorta for regulation of blood pressure and blood oxygen level. Minor functions include general sensation from the outer ear and taste sensation from the pharynx, palate, and epiglottis. Damage to vagus nerve results in hoarseness or loss of voice, difficulty swallowing, impaired gag reflex, reduced gastrointestinal motility, and increased heart rate. The effect is fatal if both nerves are damaged. The ninth and 10th cranial nerves are usually evaluated together. In addition to observing any speech or swallowing problems, patients are tested for symmetry of the gag reflex and Symmetry of palate elevation when saying, ah. Cranial nerve 11, or accessory nerve, is an unusual cranial nerve that has both cranial and spinal roots. The cranial roots originate from the medulla and exit the skull as the internal branch, which merges shortly with the vagus nerve. This part of accessory nerve is thought to innervate muscles of the palate, pharynx, and larynx. The spinal roots exit as the external branch and control the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles. There are some sensory fibers carrying sensory and nociceptive signals. People with accessory nerve damage typically experience shoulder discomfort, weakness, and the affected shoulder may sag. Patients may also have difficulty turning the head to the opposite side of the affected muscle. Cranial nerve 12, or hypoglossal nerve, is a predominantly motor nerve controlling extrinsic and intrinsic muscles of the tongue. It is responsible for various tongue movements and shapes required for normal swallowing and speech production. Damage to this nerve results in speech and swallowing difficulties. The tongue typically deviates toward the affected side. <laughs> So uh, this was the last topic which we have covered. I'm not going to go do the case study today because we have already exceeded time. But yes. uh, I would say that you have seen the cranial nerves are very important nerves and there are a lot of activities. There are a lot of ailments which are linked to the cranial nerves and it is uh, very difficult. No MRI, no CT scan. Nothing can tell you that which cranial nerve is involved for this until and unless you have knowledge about this, which system is linked to which cranial nerve and maybe where is the dysfunction lies, that identification you will have to do in your patients. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I've covered this and I, I'm going to repeat this again in the next class. And uh, I'll inform you through the system that whether I, I'll be available for the next class or not because I have some commitment and for which I'll have to go and attend that function. So in case I'm not available, then we will do it in the uh, class on Friday.
otherwise we will come we'll do it on wednesday i am still not certain about it but i think my booking has been done for that function so we will just see and i'll let you know through pritam ji will inform you accordingly if i am not available then we will cancel that class and see sometimes later but wednesday i am going to cover this again and then do a case study and explain you how the diagnosis is made for such ailments which are related to these nerves so thank you very much thanks a lot for coming for the class i thank hope you, thank you sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you sir 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 thank you